Hi, everybody. It's uh, it's Friday, so it's it's Stephanie Parra, Government Relations Director uh, with the Arizona Education Association, coming to you live from um, AEA. Uh, just wanted to get online and give you guys a recap of uh, the second week uh, down at the Capitol. Um, what a week it's been. It was a short week. Uh, the legislature did have Monday off for Martin Luther King Day, um, but boy are things moving quickly and um, it was a, a short but a, a very busy uh, week. Um, as I had mentioned last Friday, the governor did release his uh, budget um, proposal. Um, AEA has uh, compiled a, um, a summary analysis um, for you all, for educators, um, it will be in your legislative update. Definitely make sure um, that you look for that. Um, a couple of things that I want to highlight for you all from the budget. Um, unfortunately, the governor continues to rapidly expand his results-based funding, um, or as Joe likes to call it, our, his uh, test-based funding. Um, it definitely, AEA continues to be strongly opposed to um, all of these ideas that really start doubling down on high stakes testing, whether it's test-based funding, test-based letter grades, or test-based test -based evaluations, um, we're done with it. Enough is enough. We're done with the chronic over testing in our schools, um, and we've got to, to change the direction that we're going in. Um, and so we will continue to oppose um, anything that looks like results based funding, and uh, because all it is doing is um, expanding uh, the inequities that exist um, across school districts um, and across schools and communities. Um, so we are absolutely not supportive of, of that concept. Um, additionally, the budget does have a lot of uh, grant-based, um, one-time bonus kind of projects. Um, and, you know, one of the things that the governor did um, include in his baseline is the restoration or an ongoing restoration of additional assistance. Uh, district additional assistance and charter additional assistance. This is revenue that's flexible spending, so a lot of districts to use this money um, when the governor last year only appropriated enough money for um, a limited amount of, of certified professionals, classroom teachers. Um, I know districts that used um, the money that they got from additional assistance to compensate, um, you know, whether it was other um, certified professionals or classified professionals. Um, and if the governor were really to focus his efforts on rapidly restoring additional assistance, um, we could get there this year uh, with the money that he's kind of pie piecemealing and different projects and initiatives in his budget. Um, there is money uh, to put the $371 million back into additional assistance this year. Um, so we will push for that. Um, we believe that that um, giving districts that, that um, amount of money and then the flexibility to spend it, um, it is where uh, the value lies. Um, so we um, would rather see um, a more significant investment in additional assistance rather than all of these kind of piecemealed uh, one-time bonus grant-based programs. Um, another thing uh, that moved through the, the Senate Education Committee, so uh, because Mar uh, Monday was MLK Day, the House Ed uh, Committee did not meet this week, but um, Senate Ed did meet on Tuesday. Uh, Senate Bill 1080 and um, SCR 1001. This is um, the referral. It's a it is a uh, packaged um, bill um, bills a pair of bills that are moving through the legislature to refer um, Proposition 301 renewal um, and extension to the uh, 2020 ballot. AEA's current position on these pair of bills um, is we are opposed. Um, the proposal that is currently on the table only generates 400 million new dollars. Um, so we already get um, the 0.6 sales tax uh, revenue goes to Proposition 301. That generates around 600 to 660 million dollars a year um, for um, education. And so 
you know, the adding the 0.4, which is what this proposal does, it, it goes from a 0.6 sales tax to a full penny. Um, so it adds a 0.4 that um, only generates an additional $400 million. Um, that is absolutely not enough revenue uh, to meet the needs um, in our schools. If you're looking at the needs of the K-12 system, we need a minimum of a billion new dollars. So on top of a 0.6, we need a billion new dollars um, infused into our public schools. When um, this proposal is talking PK-20, you know, they want to fund the system as a whole, which we are supportive of the concept, of course, uh, but when you're talking about a package uh, that large, the new revenue needs to be 1.5 billion new dollars. Um, if anything less than that is not going to be sufficient, it will not meet the needs of K-12, early childhood pre-K, um, or higher education. Um, so we're looking for a, a much, a much larger, uh, more comprehensive package. Um, and, and one of the most critical things uh, for AEA is that this, the new proposal is not reliant, overly reliant on the sales tax. So we will not support anything that um, goes above a penny. Um, so a 1.5 sales tax increase, for example, is not acceptable uh, to AEA. The sales tax is very regressive. Um, it hits low-income families the hardest. Um, and when we, when we were doing a lot of research for Invest in Ed, one of the things that we analyzed and looked at was the sales tax across the state in different communities. What we found was that the poorest communities in Arizona have the highest sales tax rates when you combine the local city tax, the county tax, and the state tax. Um, Communities are, um, you know, low-income communities are facing sales taxes that are 10, 12 percent. Um, so uh, extremely, extremely high. Um, and that is why AEA is adamantly opposed to raising uh, the sales tax um, so high. Absolutely, Maria, it definitely does hurt workers the most. And, and we know, um, you know, it will hurt a lot of our members, our um, both the certified and classified professionals alike. Um, so we wanna see a more comprehensive revenue package, one that looks at different revenue um, options. It doesn't have to be all income tax, all sales tax, absolutely not all sales tax, um, you know, but what other revenues are out there? Um, there we're willing to put everything on the table um, and AEA remains um, committed to working with legislators and um, and other uh, stakeholders um, uh, in education and in um, you know PK20 to, to find um, a, a proposal that makes sense for, for everyone. Um, but we have a lot of work to do. We're absolutely not there yet. Um, and so AEA will not support uh, that pair of bills until we see improvement um, in the language. Um, so for next week, I want to highlight a couple of things for you guys. So coming up on Monday um, in House Ed, um, we have um, a couple of bills that I want to call out. So first, House Bill 2184 is the identical bill to um, the Senate version of the English Language Learner Bill that we talked about last week that moved through um, Senate Ed unopposed. Um, AEA, uh, of course, absolutely supports this. Uh, we're asking our members to, to email legislators on the um, Education Committee, ask them for a yes vote. Um, this is something that we think um, has a lot of support. It has a lot of bi bipartisan support so far. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we see these uh, bills uh, through the finish line. So definitely um, are asking our folks to, to log into the Request to Speak system. Um, and uh, log in your support for House Bill 2184. There's also another bill, House Bill 2176. This is related to the um, AP exam bonus payments that we started seeing. So, um, you know, this whole idea, um, again, you know, the, the test-based funding uh, approach um, and piecemeal funding uh, that the legislature kind of has come up with over the years um, all we see in these approaches is that it rapidly expands inequity um, across schools, across um, educators, um, and so we don't um, we don't support this concept. 
Um, and so AEA will, will continue to oppose um, anything that, that continues to increase uh, inequities in funding. We really need legislators to hear us when we say we need an investment in the system as a whole. Um, we need to grow, um, uh, you know, lift all boats up. And so um, that's what we will continue uh, to champion and support. On Tuesday next week, um, Senate Education meets on Tuesday afternoons, um, and there is uh, Senate Bill uh, 1071. Um, this is related to teacher evaluations. Um, Senate Bill 1071 is, um, is a bill that uh, Sen uh, Senator Boyer sponsored. Um, we've worked with Senator Boyer in the past on teacher evaluations. Um, the version of the bill that he introduced this year is not one that we support yet. Um, I definitely hope to work with Mr. Boyer and, and produce um, um, you know, a, a, a bill that, um, that meets the needs of educators. But right now, um, the language as it stands, again, is overly reliant on high stakes testing. Um, and that is, um, we need to move away from test-based evaluations. Um, we, um, we also believe that anything, uh, when a teacher is being evaluated and when data is being looked at, it should be data that's relevant. Uh, the data needs to be valid and reliable, of course, and relevant to you and your classroom and the, um, the students that you're teaching. So, um, you know, we'll continue to talk to, to legislators about this issue. We do have a lot of bipartisan support on this issue. Um, we've had bipartisan support on the last, um, on the last, uh, during the last couple of sessions. So we'll definitely uh, continue to talk to legislators um, about this, but um, you know, uh, call, your, call your legislators, uh, the Senate Education Committee, let them know your concerns around the, the bill. Let them know what, um, what um, test-based evaluations really mean for you in the classroom. They need to hear from you. So. Um, definitely, if you can, send an email, make a phone call, um, and let the let legislators know kind of where you stand on evaluations um, and and how um, you know we we need to kind of get back to making sure that evaluations are there for you for your own professional growth to make um, you a better um, educator. Um, and so, the more that we can share our stories um, with with members the better so i definitely encourage you guys to to, to reach out um, before the senate um, education committee um, on wednesday uh, january 30th um, we are hosting uh, from 4 30 to 6 30 aea is hosting a um a red for Ed save your pension seminar um, there are um, outside influences. Um, the Koch brothers and, and the Koch network um, have, of, of course, have their grips on Arizona, um, and they are coming after your pensions. Um, there is a lot of talk at the Capitol about um, pension reform, and particularly they're talking about the um, ASRS, so the pension system that all of our members are on. Uh, they want to start tampering with the pension system. Um, and making uh, tweaks to it. Um, and of course, you know, as um, you know, the public servants that you all are, um, having a secure retirement is, is, is definitely um, the thing that you are, um, that you're invested in and, and that, that you, it is a benefit um, that you receive um, as a public employee in the state of Arizona. And so we don't wanna see pensions touched at all. Um, we want um, we want to um, give you guys the resources and the tools that you need to speak to legislators um, uh, on this issue specifically. So, um, if you come and join us, we'll be at the uh, UFCW Local 99. So, for our members, you should have gotten an invite from from us um, to join us next um, next Wednesday at UFCW. We'll have uh, Paul Matson, who is the executive director of the um, ASRS, will join us to kind of give an overview of the status of, of Arizona's um, pension system. Uh, we'll have Dad, Dan Doonan from NEA. He is a senior pension specialist um, at our national um, and will talk about, kind of give us an update on um, a, a more broad perspective on, on pensions and really speak to 
Um, pensions really do help with teacher recruitment and retention. There is um, there is a direct correlation and, and, and studies that um, have been commissioned that can directly correlate um, having a pension to keeping teachers in the classroom. Um, I know that you all see a lot of value um, in your pension and so Dan will talk about how pensions impact um, teacher recruitment and retention. And then we'll hear from Dr. Michael Kahn from the National Conference on Public Employee Retirements. Again, um, bringing in some national folks to share uh, the national perspective on where, um, you know, just more information on how pensions operate, the value of pensions, um, and, and really just to kind of give you the tools that you need um, to speak to uh, legislators on the issue. So uh, with that, um, that is all I have uh, for you guys today. Again, make sure if you haven't signed up for the um, legislative update that you do at ArizonaEA.org slash legislative update. Make sure that you get signed up for the request to speak system. Um, and I absolutely hope to see you all either at the Capitol um, or at the pension briefing next week. Uh, thank you guys. Have a great weekend and I will see you all next week.